Hi everyone, this is Lazio, the guy who has been making these YouTube videos. So first of all, I'd just like to thank to everyone who has been uh, supporting this YouTube channel to grow. And I initially started this YouTube channel as a way to share my progress during my CCIE studies. And I already achieved the CCIE back on 2021. So in this video, I want to kind of share my experience uh, on taking the CCIE lab exam and also share some tips and advice for those who plan to take the CCIE exam. I already wrote a post on LinkedIn about it and probably I'll cover some um, tips, some tricks that I use uh, during my CCIE studies and that you can apply as well, not only during your studies, but also prior to the exam day and after you're taking the exam, whether you pass or you fail in the exam. So if there is something that interests you, so stick around as let's get right into the video. First, we'll take a look at the requirements to take the CCIE lab exam. So first you have to pass the written exam and that's the anchor exam. Now, back then when I passed the CCIE written exam, that was actually one of the requirements in order to take the CCIE lab exam. Uh, but Cisco updated the CCIE routing switching track to become the enterprise track. So now you have to pass the written ENCORE exam and only then you'll be eligible to take the lab exam. Cisco expects that you are already an expert before taking the exam on these topics so it includes network infrastructure uh sdn uh be divided between sd WAN and sd access uh transport technologies security and services so things like acl snmp and automation and programmability back then when cisco updated the routing switching track to become the infrastructure enterprise there wasn't much resources available for SDN, especially for SD access that includes the DNAC and that's the management device on the SDA solution. So for me to study the SDA, I actually use uh, a lot of Cisco documentation related to uh, installation, deployment, and I also used for hands-on experience the Cisco Sandbox and Cisco DCloud as uh, they allow you to manage, configure, and depending on the type of uh, resource or type of environment you choose, you have more freedom to do some things that you might not be on the others. But I would say that DCloud allows you to do more things uh, at least that's what I was able to do. I don't know if the Cisco Sandbox uh, today, they allow you to do more things. So, so you might want to take a look at that and see if you can pick the one that allows you to have uh, more freedom during your studies. Cisco also provides a list uh, with the devices that you're expected to see on the lab exam. Or uh, some of them will be VMs, some of them will be physical equipment. And one thing that I want to notice, and this is an advice that I hope you follow, is that during your studies, use the iOS or software version recommended by Cisco. You see, if you're studying on an earlier version or on a more updated version, uh, you might find that the steps required to perform certain action will be different than the ones that Cisco recommends you to use and that you might actually uh, encounter in the lab exam. So try to stick with the iOS version that Cisco recommends and also the devices. Unless you're not able to use that iOS version, but try to find one that is very close to the one that Cisco recommends. The exam is divided in two modules. So there is the design and there is do or design, operate and optimize. So I'm just going to refer to this module as the configuration as this is the major difference between 
uh, design and configuration. It's worth to mention that the design is a three hours fixed slot, which means that you won't borrow this time to the configuration, even if you finish the design in one hour. So once you finish the design, you can actually start the configuration. In order to pass the exam, there is a minimum number of points that you have to score. So the exam has a total of 100 points and it is divided with uh, 37 on design and 63 on the configuration. And for each uh, module, there is a minimum. So let's say that design has a minimum of 18 and configuration 33. So if you take uh, below these numbers, you will fail. And the minimum acceptor is 25 for design, 45 for configuration. And this will give you a total of 17. Now, let's look at the following example. Let's say that you take uh, 36 points on design that would qualify you because it is above the minimum but you make 32 points on the configuration you have a total of 68 points now this is below the uh, minimum or the qualifying score so this means you would fail and that's what Cisco refers as pass fail now we look at another example where you take uh, 23 points on design and 43 on the configuration now, if we look at the minimum score they are above the minimum but the sum of both scores is below uh, the minimum uh, qualifying score so in this case it would be 66 so you would have pass pass but still fail in the exam so you want to hit for 26 kind uh, above the minimum score and the configuration also above the minimum score so that the sum of both scores is above the minimum or the qualifying score in this case 70. In my case my score was fail fail and fail so you might be wondering so if he failed how did he become CCIE? I actually did a second attempt and I passed on the second attempt. Now, which resources I use? Uh, I use uh, the Cisco Learning Network, Cisco documentation, uh, some books from Cisco Press and everything that I could find. And I mean everything. You see, if you're going after CCIE, you want to prove that you are an expert on the technology and not on the Cisco products. And this is a mistake that I see a lot of candidates uh, doing. They just focus on Cisco documentation. You see, BGP, OSPF, SDN, VXLAN, those technologies, they are not Cisco uh, technologies per se. Cisco uses these technologies in their product. So if you want to get a real deep understanding about these technologies, so you will have to rely on other sources and some of them from different vendors as well. For me, it was a matter just to get uh, at the source that would allow me to understand deeply how the technology works. And this means reading things like RFCs, IEEE, and drafts, things of that nature. My recommendation is that you discover the best strategy that works for you. Now, some pro tips that you should follow during your studies. You should target for a max five hours to resolve a practice lab. You want to be comfortable uh, with the solution, with the technology before the exam day. You should be able to know which configuration to use before even touching the keyboard. You don't want to get to the exam day and then using the question mark to trying to find out what is the next command you're going to use? You should already be very comfortable before the exam date. Also, you have to improve the speed on typing and also the accuracy because you don't want typos uh, on your configuration. And also, uh, start using the notepad to write your commands and just 
copy from notepad and paste into the device so just practice 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 as much as you can until you feel bored because uh that will help you that will save you a lot of time uh when you go to the exam now depending on which country you decide to take the exam just make sure that you arrive uh with plenty of time so that you can rest okay you don't want to be on a stressful state uh so try to meditate or do a site survey around the building just to identify okay what is the entrance and who should i reach when i get here uh, to take the exam and also have a good dinner and sleep uh, and just try to be in an emotional state that you are relaxed and ready to take the exam one thing that I love about the exam is that it is a progressive storyline. It essentially means that it looks like uh, you are on, on the office. And so people are reaching out to you with different problems, right? I have this problem in my computer. I have this problem in that network. So my cat died and my kids, they stop yelling. So, you know, the usual things in the office and you are the network engineer who is supposed to provide support for all of these problems including the one related with the cans now during the exam don't try to go for 100 percent correct okay just don't do it don't don't waste your time on it you should try to find the best solution uh in that moment if you can't find the best solution, guess what? You either move on to the next question or violate some of the Cisco restrictions so that the solution work. And probably if you have time left, you can come back to that question and see if it can come up with a different solution. But don't try to be 100% sure that, okay, this is the best one. Okay. You have to always think about solution and time measurement. This is very difficult to achieve when you are under pressure and you have a limited time to provide uh, different solutions to solve different problems all at the same time. Okay. Although you can rely on the proctor for help, but uh, he's only going to help you if you prove or you're able to justify that uh, it is a problem with the lab and not something that you're not able to solve by yourself okay my recommendation for you after taking the exam is that you write as much as you can remember on a piece of paper because this will help you in case you fail the exam so you will have the topology probably some questions still available and you'll be able to work on those questions uh, before rescheduling the exam and you want to reschedule uh, not too close and not too far away but in a time frame let's say one month or so because you still have all that knowledge uh, on top of your mind now if you push it too far away like two to three months you probably start forgetting some things now if you pass the exam Congrats, you just joined the 3% club of those who become CCIE. When you sit at your desk to take the exam, uh, you will have a, a login screen like the one you see there. Uh, it is going to be 100% web-based. Uh, there is no printed workbook, so don't expect uh, a physical workbook. You will have two monitors. Yes and also the environment is linux based so you have a terminal emulator uh colors and a scratch of papers and one thing very good is that you don't have to remember how to convert decimal to binary to hexadecimal from the top of your head yes this will allow you to use the calculator so good right this is what the user interface looks like so by using two monitors you can 
uh, move the topologies on one side of the screen and just look at the questions and the terminal on the other side. So it it's up to you how you want to organize. And my recommendation on this one, don't open too many tabs, okay? Otherwise, you'll be using too much resources from the PC. And don't expect to be a super fast PC with a super fancy keyboard. No, it's like you are in those jobs where you have a crap keyboard, a crap mouse, and you are the network engineer who is under pressure to deliver the best solution as possible. So just don't open too many tabs, okay? So this is a sample of the design uh, module. And one thing that worth to mention in comparison with the configuration is that there is no going back on design. So whatever answer you select, there is no going back. So make sure that you choose the right answer. In the deploy module or configuration, you're able to click on the devices and you access the terminal. You're also able to navigate backwards, going forward, so whatever you want, you can start configuring one section and in case you get stuck, you can move to another one and return once you finish the other runs. You can also see how many points per question and you don't see that in design and design so the score is hidden. My recommendation is that you keep track of how many points you think you're making in the deploying module just to give you an idea on how much time you should invest on each question. Now the questions format might vary a lot and I mean a lot. Uh, you can have multiple choice questions and you can have uh, options where you're going to click on the device just to select the best option. You can also drag and drop either topologies or answers. You can also have the drop down. So as you select one option, you have another window coming on. You also have a multiple choice single answer and a multiple choice multiple answer. So Cisco just gets really crazy uh, when it's about questions. You can also have uh, questions inside questions and trust me that not okay that's completely crazy and you might have a question for instance where you'd answer one option they have multiple options inside that question and you will only get points if all the answers you provide inside that answer are correct it's just crazy okay make sure that you select the diagrams that give you the information that you need to answer a specific question okay don't try to open all the diagrams available but only focus on one that will give you the information that you need for instance we can see this is the layer 2 information so don't expect to see any layer of 3 information because you have different diagrams for the different uh, types of information so we can see here we have the IGP where you're looking uh, only at layer 3 information and we can see also BGP where you focus only on transport 1 and we can also see the VPN V4 diagram so just make sure that you select the best diagram that will give you the information that you need for that specific question so that's it what I wanted to share with you guys. So I became CCIE 65745 on 2021 and I recertified last year uh, by taking the CCIE security uh, score exam. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.